Hello, I'm Mr. Richmond, and today I will be showing you some seed dispersal methods um, of various plants, and we're going to just use items that you would find in your household. Um, they should just be everyday items. Uh, you might not have all of them, but any that you do have, feel free to use and you know model these same processes. Um, so as we have discussed, seed dispersal is the process of seeds getting as far away from their parent plant as they can. That way they have their own space to grow. Okay, so different seeds have different ways of doing this, and actually seeds come in all shapes and sizes. Today we're just going to focus on a few, and just as an example, I'm going to show you one type of seed, which is actually this coconut. This coconut right here is actually technically a seed, for that, which could create a new coconut tree. And one of the cool things about coconuts is that they're able to float. So when they fall out of their tree, if they encounter water, it's a really great way for them to move to another space because they can just travel down the water and then at one point they'll be distributed. So coconuts are really cool in that way. But not everybody has coconuts, so we're not going to talk too much about those. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is a weed burr. Now burrs, which I have a picture of one right here, it might be tough to see, but burrs are basically nature's Velcro. They have, the seeds have little hooks on them, which when an animal's fur or even a human's clothing comes into contact with those hooks, the seed will stick onto the fur or the clothing. And when the animals have these stuck on them, they will travel to new places and they will fall off and then that will help with the seed dispersal. And so to model this, I what I've done is I found a piece of Velcro, which I have just attached to the back of my printout of my burr. And I'm going to use my stuffed animal here, my Lisa Simpson, to show how this works. So as Lisa's walking along, she maybe encounters the plant that has this burr. The burr will stick to her. Oh, it fell off, but for the most part, it will stay very stuck to her. Maybe she walks along and she realizes it's stuck to her and drops it off over here, and now it's moved, right? So those are weed burrs. That's one way you can model that process. Okay, so next up, we have our poppy seeds, which come from the poppy plant that looks like this. Okay, now at the top of each stalk, you have these pods here. And inside of these pods is where all the poppy seeds are. And the way that they get dispersed is actually the wind is needed because the wind will blow the stalks side to side. And if it blows it hard enough, as it tips over, a little, a few seeds come out of the top, almost like it's like a salt or pepper shaker. And to demonstrate this, what I have is, in fact, a shaker, which actually, inside of here, there are some poppy seeds, but there's also sesame seeds, a lot of stuff that you'd find, like, on a bagel. Okay, so I'm just going to use this piece of paper just to demonstrate, so you can maybe see some seeds actually falling. But I want you to imagine that my arm is the stalk of a poppy seed. There's wind blowing, so I'm swaying, and if it sways enough, some seeds will come out of the top. Okay, so these poppy seeds, they don't typically go too far from the plants, but that's okay. Just this little bit will allow a little bit of space for the seeds to grow. So that's how poppy seeds work. Now I'm just going to move all of this. Okay. Clear this off. Okay, next up we have sunflower seeds, which I think everybody is familiar with. I'll show you a picture. So these are sunflowers, which you have probably seen. But then, as sunflowers no longer are in bloom, they start to lose their petals and also lose some of this stuff that's in the middle of the petals right here. And once they do, it reveals beneath many, many sunflower seeds. And you might see, be able to see all of these seeds. In a typical sunflower head, there can be over a thousand seeds, sunflower seeds. And so I have here some actual sunflower seeds. And the way that these get dispersed is actually animals, including humans, love to eat them, right? So when the time is right, Animals will come and they'll gather up seeds from sunflower seeds and they will try and take some with them. And as they take some with them, you know, they'll maybe have a handful, but as they're walking, some will undoubtedly fall out, 
right? And so that's how they get dispersed, okay? The good thing about this demo is you get to eat these afterwards. Now, moving these over, we will get to our last demo, which is milkweed. So milkweed seeds are very special in that they have these follicle, almost hair-like structures coming out of them. And what that does is it allows the seeds to float through the air. And the main thing that makes these travel is wind. It's kind of like a dandelion. When you blow on a dandelion and you see all the seeds flying through the wind, that's the exact same principle that's used here. And so I don't have any milkweed seeds here at my house. Um, so what I did instead is I just kind of made some out of paper. Okay, so I'll show you the process of how I did this. First, I just took any old piece of blank paper and I cut out a trapezoid shape like this. Okay, you can see how big it is. I'll give you my hand as a reference. From there, I just cut a bunch of little slivers of the paper one by one. And notice none of the cuts go below about here. Okay, and then from there, you can actually just fold it over almost like into a cone shape. You can feather these out a bit and then pinch the bottom. And if you want, you can even color the bottom so it's black just like the seed. So you'll see I've done that on a couple of these. And so once you have these, you can hold them in your hand and you can test it out. So the wind does help to disperse these seeds. They can travel very far through the air. And, you know, I encourage you to try any of these uh, seed dispersal methods at home. Um, you know, use whatever you can to model them. Maybe you don't have some supplies. Try to come up with your own ways of doing it. And, um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Thank you for joining me here, and we will see you next time. Thanks so much. Okay, scientists, thanks for watching. Did you enjoy that lesson? Subscribe below to see more fun science videos. You can also become a member of PS Science on Patreon to support what we're doing. See you next time.